we will bring this meeting of the Peterborough City Council of May 23rd, 2023 to order. Uh, the first item of business is our land acknowledgement. We expect, respectfully acknowledge that we're on the treaty and traditional territory of the Mississauga, the Ashenabic. We offer our gratitude to the First Nations for their care for and teachings about our earth and our relations. May we honor those teachings. We'll now uh, have 30 seconds of personal reflection. I would now ask everyone to rise for the singing of the Canadian National Anthem. constitutional uh, statement, recognition of the Constitution and, and Charter of the Rights and Freedoms, that the Council of the City of Peterborough recognize the principles contained in our Constitution and the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The next item of business, first of all, to uh, uh, good news, of course, uh, last uh, Sunday evening, uh, the Peterborough Peets uh, finished what one could only say a magical run uh, to win the Ontario Hockey League uh, Championship. I see some hats waving in the background. Uh, to Mike Oak, the general manager and his team, Rob Wilson as his coaching staff, and of course uh, uh, the players, we wish them all the very best as they embark upon uh, their journey, the next step, uh, to Kamloops, British Columbia, uh, to participate in the Memorial Cup. And uh, as some of us said yesterday, the, at the gathering at Quaker Square, we're looking forward to another really big party here in Peterborough. So uh, all of us are anticipating that. The next item of business is the proclamation of the National Accessibility Week uh, 2023. Whereas the National Accessibility Week is a time to promote inclusion and accessibility in our communities and workplaces at a time to celebrate the contributions of Canadians with disabilities. Whereas National Accessibility Week is a time to recognize the efforts of individuals, communities, and workplaces actively removing barriers to give people of all abilities a better opportunity to engage in their communities. Whereas Access Awareness Week was launched in 1987, following the Rick Hansen Man in Motion World Tour to promote better community access for people with disabilities. And whereas the city of Peterborough is committed to building an inclusive community and providing accessible environments, supporting the goal of express in the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act of achieving an accessible society by preventing and removing barriers to equal access for persons with disabilities. Therefore, be resolved that I, Jeff Leo, Mayor of the City of Peterborough, who hereby proclaim the week of May 28th to June 3rd, 2023, as Accessibility Week in the City of Peterborough. 
I encourage all citizens to recognize and support the important work being carried out by the city's Accessibility Advisory Committee, the Council for Persons with Disabilities, and the many disability-related organizations in the city of Peterborough. Persons with disabilities are trusted friends, neighbors, community advocates, and beloved family members. Inclusion and equality for persons with disabilities benefits everyone. When persons with disabilities have equal opportunities to contribute to our community, have equal opportunities to work, have the same quality of service from their government, and enjoy the same quality of life as everyone else, we build a stronger uh, economy and a stronger Peterborough. The Council of Persons with Disabilities will be hosting a second annual Capable Con on Saturday, June 3rd in downtown Peterborough at the Venture North Building parking lot. This event is an opportunity to celebrate the differences in our community and create a safe space to learn, share, and promote inclusivity. I now want to ask Councillor Duguay to say a few words. Uh, Councillor Duguay has been a, a strong advocate, particularly in the design field and the planning field, uh, to make sure with persons with disabilities get a full access to everything uh, Peterborough has to offer. Councillor Duguay, please. Thank you, Your Worship. And you mentioned uh, Mr. Hansen. Um, I had the pleasure of me meeting Mr. Hansen as part of that world, too, a remarkable, remarkable human being. It is my pleasure, uh, Your Worship, members of council, public, those in the room and those uh, attending virtually, I'd like to introduce Sue Dixon. Sue is an artist uh, and an accessibility advocate who has called Peterborough home for almost 35 years. She, she is a graduate of both Fleming College and Trey University. She has been a member of the Accessibility Advisory Committee since March of 2019 and a member of the Built Environment Subcommittee since 2017, serving as chair for many of those years. I also have the pleasure of working directly with Sue in my capacity as a council liaison to the AAC. I, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Sue Dixon. for the start of National Accessibility Week on May 8th, 28th, we want to take this opportunity to reflect on Peterborough's commitment to accessibility and inclusion. Long before the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disability Act, the AODA, created the requirement for many Ontario municipalities to establish an accessible advisory committee in 2002, Peterborough had created the Council for Persons with Disabilities in 18, 1989. CPD served as the AAC until the AODA changes made them separate entities in 2012. CPD sets the standard for educating the public on accessibility issues. Each program delivery reinforces a best practice approach rooted in disability. CPD offers programs designed, implemented, and facilitated by actual disabled people, embodying the notion of nothing about us without us. The Accessibility Advisory Committee addresses matters of accessibility and inclusion as it relates to requirements at the municipal level. CPD's focus is advocacy-centered, offering programs to the public in experiential education and accessibility assessments for the built environment and virtual spaces. This two-pronged approach to accessibility has meant that Peterborough has been a leader in fostering inclusion. The AAC administers the Access Fund, which was created in 2016. The fund helps to maximize inclusion in municipal spaces by increasing accessibility beyond the minimum afforded by legislation. Since its inception, the fund has allowed for accessibility upgrades like creating braille signage at the library, adding arena aisle lighting and railings to the Memorial Center, and installing the first hearing loop assistive technology right here at the City Hall reception desk. The fund was also used for mental health first aid training and time in my shoes program training from CPD. The access fund has enabled playground enhancement at Pearson daycare and heritage park. It has funded the retrofitting of power door operators at various facilities made walkway and ramp improvements, including trails, benches, and made a possible beach access mat and route at Beavermead. 
at an event like CPD's second annual Capable Con. It's just an example of how the AAC and the CPD work together. As mentioned before, it will be held on June 3rd at the Venture North parking lot and is free for everyone to attend. On behalf of the Accessibility Advisory Committee and the Council for Persons with Disabilities, I invite everyone to attend Capable Con as it closes Peterborough's National Accessibility Week. Accessibility Week. The late city councilor and founder of CPD, Lois Hart Maxwell, said that her accessibility work would never be finished. Recognizing that there will always be more to do, a civic award for those who have enhanced the quality of life for people with disabilities through volunteer work in the city or county of Peterborough has, a, has been awarded 46 times since 1989. The award is named after Hart Maxwell's peers, Gordon and R.B. Paul and Beck, who work to make their, committee, their community more accessible. Because the work of accessibility has no end, it means that advocates must continue to balance operating within systems and at the same time, pushing against them to seek equity. Ex accessibility needs to be at the forefront of conversations to ensure it is always considered, even as we celebrate our progress. Working towards accessibility in 2023, advocates have new challenges. While people with disabilities can easily get into the city hall building now, losing access to transportation will reverse Peterborough's accessibility significantly. If somebody needs an accessible taxi to get medical care, medical care after hours, that medical care is often inaccessible to them. Eliminating community buses will make it more difficult to access care during the day too. Many people with disabilities require transit to get to work and to volunteer. Without accessible transportation, those volunteering for CPD may not be able to attend. Not prioritizing transportation means that Peterborough's other efforts at inclusion could easily become irrelevant. Transportation is essential for people with disabilities to live fulsome and satisfying lives. As we embrace National Accessibility Week, please remember that in unending jobs, many hands make light work. For NAW 2023, let us celebrate those who have installed ramps along our paths and work to find ways to use universal design to build accessible paths for the advocates of tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for uh, your presentation. It's interesting you uh, mentioned Lois Howard Maxwell. I had the opportunity, I served with Lois Howard Maxwell, uh, one of the most remarkable city councillors that uh, I got a chance to be with, and uh, she had contracted polio as a child, and uh, and and her advocacy work uh, uh, makes Peterborough uh, a much better place to live, work, and play. And we'll always thank her for that. The um, next item of business is approval of minutes. I'd ask someone move the the minutes of April twenty fourth, twenty twenty three. Councillor Baldwin, we'll go to a vote. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. We'll do uh, the one of May 8th. Councillor Baldwin, thank you very much. We'll vote on both of them. That is carried. Do we have any disclosures of pecuniary interest at this time? Councillor Hakey, please. Uh, thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, item 10A2, which is zoning bylaw amendment for 823 Park Street South, report IPSPL 23-013. Um, the applicant, I am a client of the applicant. Thank you very much, um, Councillor Hakey. Any other? Councillor Duguay, please. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. I will be declaring a conflict uh, with respect to a delegation this evening uh, uh, addressing the ministerial zoning order for Paddock Wood. The planning consultant, uh, the firm associated with this file, a family member is a owner of the firm. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor uh, Duguay. Any other uh, declarations at this time? 
The next item of business will be delegations, registered delegations. Uh, the first one we have is the MZO 24 Paddock Wood. Uh, we welcome Mark Graham, please, Mr. Graham. Mr. Graham, if you could give us your name and address, you have five minutes to make a presentation. At the end of four minutes, I'll signal that you have one minute left. Welcome, Mr. Graham. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Mark Graham with CMHA HKPR, 466 George Street, Peterborough, Ontario. So thank you for the opportunity to address council in short order on this very important zoning matter. This request would not have been our normal plan of action using a provincial minister's zoning order if it wasn't for the immediate need to expedite a zoning change to 24 Paddock Wood, Peterborough. I want to begin by expressing my appreciation to city staffers, in particular, Commissioner Jasbir Reyna of Infrastructure and Planning Services, City Planner Ian Walker and Brad Appleby, Director of Planning and Development and Urban Design, for their timely responses, availability for advice and recommendations to apply for an MZO order. <laughs> their customer service needs to be acknowledged and commended, so I want to thank them. I will clarify that the state of property 24 Paddock Wood, Peterborough, is owned by the CMHA Nonprofit Housing Corporation of Peterborough. It's an incorporated nonprofit since October 6, 2006, so it's nearly 17 years. The corporation is the sister board of the CMHA HKPR and at arm's length. The establishment of this nonprofit was to allow the operation of four county crisis services, which includes six crisis, safe beds, mobile outreach 24 7 call center, case management, and short term crisis. CMHA HKPR is the operator of this four county community service, and at the time, CMHA HKPR could not pay itself through rental payments as this constituted a conflict with our funders, which was the Ministry of Health. So the present property is zoned R3C3. We are requesting an MZO order to change zoning and variance of uh, the property to public service 2, PS2, with the exception to permitting a detox center use with a maximum of 12 beds to be contained within the existing building. On Tuesday, May 2nd, in Peterborough, CMHA HKPR hosted Associate Minister of Mental Health and Addictions, Michael Tobolo, and MPP Dave Smith during Mental Health Week with a public announcement of Provincial Ministry of Health funding of $1.1388 million to operate six detox and six treatment beds. In partner with, partnership with Forecast, Four County Crisis Addictions, and CMHA, the following services will include a 12-bed residential program that includes six, six withdrawal management beds and six residential treatment beds in the city of Peterborough. CMHA HKPR will host the program and provide facility supports and forecast will hold responsibility for program operations. As host, CMHA HKPR will convert a property to suit this purpose. Property has been identified for the use that is outside the downtown core insulating clients from substance use and influencing communities, thus increasing the probable success of a positive treatment intervention experience. So we're looking at six adult withdrawal management beds for mixed gender, six adult male residential treatment beds, and then we're adding six day treatment spots for local populations with service redeployment strategies from existing forecast programs. Keeping in mind, we need a critical mass. And if you start with six and two people leave, four people in a program is not helpful for treatment. The proposed six adult residential withdrawal management beds would provide medically supported evidence-based response for client admitted for treatment of acute withdrawal symptoms for mixed gender populations. The program model staffing uh, will facilitate and develop, be developed to account for the needs of both genders. The proposed six adult residential treatment beds would provide medically supported evidence-based interventions and programming for males, identifying clients with a program duration of up to 35 days. The interdisciplinary withdrawal management team would include a nurse practitioner, registered practical nurse, withdrawal management workers, intake coordinator, addiction treatment clinicians, and a program manager. On Tuesday, May 16th, 
we held a community meeting with neighbors in the Ashburnham ward to discuss our plans to rezone and repurpose 24 Paddock Wood. In addition, we invited councillors Gary Baldwin and councillor Keith Rial of Ward 4 Ashburnham to the meeting along with the City of Peterborough Planning Department. Mark, if you could just kind of uh, One tie minute. it up. Yes. Yeah, I got about 30 seconds. And sp I, you just took 15 out of my uh, order. That's all good. Um, Inspector John Lyons of Peterborough Police forecasted CMHA. Of the 55 or so that attended the meeting, we responded to their feedback, um, addressed their concerns, and answered any questions they had. We've received letters of support from the County of Peterborough and Curve Lake First Nations Council endorsing the MZO application. I conclude that the timing of this rezoning is paramount as we have a limited window of a two-year uh, funding commitment. We're hopeful that ongoing sustainable funding will continue. Once we've received a rezoning order, a building permit will be filed to renovate the property, adding six additional beds, staff offices, two additional washrooms and showers. We anticipate that the program will be fully operational by November 1st, 2023. Mark, uh, thanks so much, and uh, we appreciate uh, uh, all your work you're doing uh, with Canadian Mental Health, in particular as we move this uh, a key project forward that community uh, desperately needs. And, you know, we thank the Governor of Ontario, Mr. Smith, Mr. Tobolo, uh, for their efforts on our behalf to make this happen. Is there questions? Uh, Councillor Real, please. Um, through the Chair to Mark, um, certainly uh, in the attendance that both Council Baldwin and I were at, can you kind of... Um, encapsulate the questions that were the residents of the area to give some sort of comfort um, that you, both you and Donna Rogers from Forecast gave to the people, because most of the questions that were asked were around security and their properties. So can you kind of encapsulate a bit, uh, the 55 individuals that were there on the questions uh, and the, the comfort that you gave to both, um, both meetings that we had? Mark, please. I, I was hoping you were going to do that, but that's okay. It's, I, I was thought you'd give a great summary between uh, you and Gary, but I'll I'll digress here. So um, I think th some of the initial comments were: you're close to the school. Have you engaged with the school? I will tell you that we did an outreach to the school, uh, to the principal. Uh, our intentions are to schedule a meeting. Uh, they did not attend the consultation, so we're going to reach out to the school to talk a little bit more about the. Uh, the, um, the actually the trail that backs on to Paddock Wood and the proximity to the school. So that that was a, a bit of a, an issue with, with some of the neighbors concerned about the safety uh, of the students. Um, the other piece is we really try to emphasize that we've been in the neighborhood for 17 years without incident. Uh,